Hello and welcome to our presentation on filariasis by Dr. Ignatius Cole. Let's go and talk about this topic. So what's inside? The etiology of the cause, the transmission of filaria, the epidemiology of filaria, the life cycle of filaria, the clinical features, acute filarial lymphangitis, treatment, tropical pulmonary eosinophilia, and its management and prevention. So what is the cause of filariasis? There are three uh, filaria. There are Ucheruria bancrofti, Brugia malai, and Brugia timori. These are parasites. The adult worms, 4 to 10 cm in length, live in the lymphatics, and the females produce microfilari that circulate in large numbers in the peripheral blood, usually at night. So, the adult worms live in, live in the lymphatics, and the larval stage, that is microfilari, will circulate the blood in large numbers, usually at night. So when diagnosing this illness, we'll take the blood sample at night. So this is the filarial worm, the microfilari, roaming in the blood vessels with the RVCs. This is microscopic picture. So how is filaria transmitted? The Ushiria bancrofti is usually transmitted by night biling Culex or Anopheles mosquitoes. This Culex or Anopheles mosquitoes will transmit Ucheruria. So what is the epidemiology? 120 million cases globally per year. The infection is widespread in tropical Africa, on the northern African coast, in coastal areas of Asia, Indonesia, northern Australia, southern Pacific Islands, the West Indies, and also in northern South America. So clearly the picture is shows here, South America, areas of Africa, and um, South Asian regions, the island region of Asia, coastal regions of Asia, etc. So this is the, uh, the spread of uh, filaria, the present prevalence of filaria by WHO. So how is the life cycle of us? Uh, for example, um, to take an example of a mosquito which has an infective larva. The mosquito will suck on the blood of a human suffering from filaria. It will take on the microfilaria in the peripheral blood at night and it will pass the infective larva stage. The microfilaria in the blood and trapped in pulmonary capillaries will give rise to tropical pulmonary eosinophilia in the, in the capil pulmonary capillaries. The adult worms in lymphatics will block the lymphatic system and give rise to acute lymphangitis and lymphedema or elephantiasis. And it can also cause epididymal orchitis and hydrocele. This is the pathogenesis of Ucheruria bancrofti and Brugia malai. So this another picture also shows the same. So what are the clinical features? The clinical features are due to two phenomena: the toxins released by the adult worms and the death of the adult worm itself. The toxins will cause dilatation of the lymphatic vessels, also known as lymphangiectasia. Ectasia means dilation and lymphatic means lymphatic vessels. This will lead to lymphatic dysfunction and dysfunction of the lymph channels will cause lymphatic filariasis, lymphedema and even hydrocell. And when the adult worm dies, it will cause acute filarial lymphangitis. And lymphatic obstruction can persist even after the worm is dead. So what are the features of acute filarial lymphangitis? They are fever, pain, tenderness and erythema along the course of the inflamed lymphatic vessels. Inflammation of the male genital tract, including the spermatic cord, the epididymis, and the testis is common. Episodes usually last for just a few days, but they can occur several times in a year, so the person will suffer repeated bouts of lymphangitis. And temporary edema is, occurs initially, but it will become more persistent, and regional lymph nodes will also enlarge. So there also will be progressive enlargement, coarsening, corrugation, fissuring and bacterial infection of the skin and subcutaneous tissue which will develop gradually causing irreversible elephantesis. So initially there will be enlargement and gradual coarsening, then corrugations and fissuring, then there will be bacterial infection and subcutaneous tissue and skin will get infected and fissured and there will be irreversible elephantesis and this will proceed in these stages, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4. The scrotum may also reach an enormous size. You can see the scrotum reaching enormous size here. 
and there can also be chyluria means in the urine there will be present of fat globules in the urine making it milky and opalescent and the fat globules will rise to the top so what sort of investigations will you do in the case of filariasis it is usually a clinical diagnosis no investigation as such is needed needed it can be diagnosed by history and examination we can see eosinophilia we can see positive filarial serology and we can detect microfilaria in the peripheral blood collected at night time it can be detected in a wet blood film or detected by microfiltration of a sample of lysed fluid blood so we'll detect the microfilaria in the peripheral blood collected at night time there will be also positive serology and eosinophilia because worms will every worm can cause eosinophilia it can also be detected in a hydrocele fluid of course but the worm has been long dead in the cases of elephantiasis it is a very chronic case so the worms are already dead and they cannot be detected in elephantiasis and calcified worms can be present on radiography the dead worms are calcified and they can be seen on x-rays or ct scan and movements of worms can be detected on scrotal ultrasound in cases of hydrocele and we an indirect fluorescence analyzer can detect the antibodies to the worms and immunochromatographic card tests are also available the treatment is actually quite simple it is diethyl carbamazin or DEC DEC diethyl carbamazin 2 mg per kg orally 3 times daily for 12 days or 6 mg per kg as a single dose for 12 days this will kill the microfilaria and the adult worms altogether so most adverse effects seen on DEC treatment are due to the host response to drying microfilaria so people will say ah, uh, there are many side effects of filarial therapy it is because of the dying microfilaria so people who have been already infected will usually show the side effects so this is directly proportional to the microfilarial load so the more the worms are in the body the more the amount of parasites in the body the more the side effects can occur so the main symptoms are fever headache nausea vomiting arthralgia and prostration this usually occurs within 24 to 36 hours of the first dose of DEC and antihistamines or glucocorticoids can treat this allergic phenomena so we can give stat hydrocortisone or clofeniramine and this will treat the allergic phenomena other regimen is single dose resume with albendazole 400 mg ivermectin 200 microgram per kg with or without DEC 300 mg so these three drugs taken together a single dose can treat filaria quite easily So now let's talk to talk about tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. So this is a special type of uh, filaria, special presentation of filaria, caused due to the host response to microfilaria. So this condition, tropical pulmonary eosinophilia, is a complication and is seen mainly in India due to the microfilaria which are trapped in the pulmonary capillaries that are destroyed by allergic inflammation. So microfilaria get trapped in the small pulmonary capillaries and are destroyed by allergic inflammation leading to tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. So what are the symptoms? The symptoms are paroxysmal cough, wheeze and fever. So if untreated, this may progress to debilitating chronic interstitial lung disease. So interstitial lung disease can result due to tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. So what are the investigations we do? Serology is usually strongly positive. IG levels due to the allergic phenomena are massively elevated. Circulating microfilaria are not found. And chest x ray shows miliary changes or motor opacity. So there are miliary changes or motor opacities in both chest x ray or CT. And pulmonary function shows a restrictive long picture. And we can also do a CT chest. So this is a typical case of typical x ray of tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. We can see multiple small nodules with indistinct outlines producing a pattern of generalized increase in long markings. So we can see increase in long markings in this figure. We can see increased long markings. They are clearly increased long markings. So why is the treatment? The treatment is quite simple. Diethyl carbamazine for 14 days will treat tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. So what are the prevention strategies? The preventative strategies are 
Treatment of the whole population in endemic areas with annual single dose of DEC6M Zipakasi, either alone or a combination of albendazole plus ivermectin, 400 mg albendazole, 200 IV mg ivermectin, and 300 mg DEC. So these three drugs can be con given combined, and this will reduce the final real transmission. And mass treatments will be combined with mosquito control programs like distributing mosquito nets, etc. Thank you. Please subscribe.